beloved, we are gathered together here in the presence of God and this company of witnesses to join together this man and this woman in holy matrimony. And if any of you can show just cause why they may not be really joined together, let him now speak or else hereafter forever hold his peace. Well, good evening, everybody, and welcome to this evening's broadcast. I'm sure that by just hearing what I've just read, most of you can remember that at your wedding day, or perhaps at weddings that you've attended. And so tonight, we are going to be speaking on a very, very important subject called marriage. And so before we continue, we just want to say a very warm welcome to all the viewers and we see that there are many of you online already. Welcome. It's such a pleasure and an honor to have you join us tonight. Um, please, if you can uh, share tonight's program and also begin your watch parties because those are just working tremendously. And let the word go out. Let whatever we speak about tonight with all the, both these dear couples, with Portia and myself, let whatever we speak tonight, let it come forth as something that is going to be seed that is going to be sown on ground that will produce after its own kind we do believe that what we are going to be speaking about tonight is something that is important that we've seen over this past uh, six months where marriages have taken a huge huge you knock and so before we go any further I want to just ask you to bow your heads with me in prayer at your homes and let us open this evening's broadcast in prayer. Heavenly Father, we come before you today in the mighty, in the precious, and in the wonderful name of Jesus Christ. Lord, today we are so grateful that we can come online like this and amidst the lockdown and all the pandemic that we face, we can use the medium of technology. We can use that which you have blessed us with so that we can reach many, many people. And Lord, tonight as you have given both Portia and I the direction of speaking and discussing this very important subject on marriage, we thank you that you've given us two wonderful couples in Darren and Tamlin and Darren and Kaveshni as we will speak and listen to questions and begin to not only help them, but help the many hundreds that will be watching. And Father, I pray that that which we will speak, which we know is founded upon your word, that will produce fruit in their lives. And we will see marriages not only restored, but we will see relationships being built. We will see purpose come out of couples. We will see that the understanding of the picture of marriage, that which you've intended, which you've ordained as a covenant between man and wife, let this teaching come for today as a blessing to all those that are watching, all those that will watch in the evening, later, and in the days to come. Let this be a blessing. We give you all of the thanks, all of the worship, and all of the honor today in Jesus' mighty name. And everybody said, Amen. Well, I think it is a very good time to do a hashtag. And if I ask Darren on my left to do a hashtag, and if I tell him what, I think he will have to whisper it into Tamlin's ear. But he can do that, and so can Darren on my right. But you can do something different. I want you to say, hashtag, I love, and whoever your, your spouse is. Put their name there if it is your spouse is John. Hashtag I love John or hashtag I love Susan. Let us hear and see how many love hashtags we can send up tonight. So come everybody. Let me see. I want to see this take place. I'm following this. I can see some of you saying hashtag I love Jesus. Listen, you're not me to Jesus. If you are single, that's okay. But if you're married, I want to hear, see your spouse's name. So come everybody, hashtag I love Nikita, I love Tracy, I love Duncan, I love David. Oh, this is beautiful. Come, let me see more. more. I love Ashley. Okay, I love that. I love Rish. Okay, well done, well done. Come, I need to see more coming in. 
Hashtag put the name of your spouse in there. I want you to profess your love for them. Let me say this as much as we making this a bit lighthearted so that you can understand and enjoy it and get to the level that we all at. It's also a very spiritual uh, act that you are doing. When you profess your love, you know what you are saying? You are saying, I love you, whoever your spouse is. And the enemy is listening to this. Because the enemy has got to know that that which God has ordained, that which God has blessed, the union of you two coming together is a union that God has ordained. And that is a blessing and a covenant that will exist forevermore. So the more you say it, the more powerful it becomes in the spirit atmosphere over your home, over your marriage, over your life. So say it again. Come every. I can see a lot of you saying, Hashtag I love Leon. Hashtag I love Ricky. I love Stanton. I love Seelan. Oh, this is beautiful. I love Minolan. I love Cameron. I love Arnold. Oh, mama. That's beautiful. I love Jeff. Okay, Jeff, you got to love me. Okay, I love Diana. Oh, thank you for replying. I love Vinvani. I love Anand Tetti. I love Ivan. I love Jolene. Okay, I love Sharika. Wonderful. I love Gerald. Oh, this is beautiful. I am really enjoying this. So, your love that you are professing, we're going to talk about this. And I'm glad that we can get into it in a very light-hearted way because... We were talking about this over the past few days. And the message, I love you, many couples, believe it or not, it's a secret to many couples. And when children hear it for the first time, where their moms and dads say it, whether it's in public or they're forced to say it, let me say this. We've got to come to a place where saying I love you must become more often, not uh what's the word it must have become uh too repetitive but it must be meaningful when you say it but you must always say it you must always affirm your partner now i'm just ready to go i can see there's so many of you online and now we are going to get into this and so i want to give the mic to Portia and let it just give us a little introduction and afterward we are going to introduce both the couples. Good evening everyone. I'm so delighted to be here with Noel and as you know uh, as well as the lovely two couples on either si the side of us, as you know uh, we've celebrated 25 years in the last week mm. and um, so we're so grateful to be where we are today in our marriage and so we were thinking about uh, having the session a few weeks back I think and uh, we thought that as much as we uh, we feel we truly believe we've got so much to learn and grow in in our marriage but there are definitely um, uh, things that we've learned along the way which we would love to uh, share with couples whether you online and with the couples that uh, have come come today and so we just want to we just hope that we are going to be a blessing and an encouragement uh, to the couples here as well as to some of you uh, um, listening tonight we hope that you'll be able to pick something up um, from what we're going to share on the couples have actually uh, given us uh, some uh, questions they're going to give us some questions and we're going to answer to the best of our ability based on our marriage journey i would say <laughs> Wonderful. I am so eager to just say some of these names, love, before we continue. I'm so impressed by your, uh, the, your professions, uh, what you are professing tonight, uh, not your profession, <laughs> what you are professing, and I'm going to repeat some of them. I love Ivan. I love Anand Chetty. I love Jolene. I love Sharika. I love Gerald. I love Carl. I love Sharvan. I love Brendan. I love Elton. I love Cameron. I love Malcolm. I love Denver. I love Samantha. I love Cole. I love Kevin. Someone says watching. Okay, that's all right. I love Vivian. Oh, well done. Okay. I love Levadan. Well done. Uh, I love Amy. 
Okay, this is just beautiful. Well, everybody, thank you for this. is a beautiful, beautiful evening. It's starting off so well. And right now, we are going to get into the program. We're going to be with you for about an hour. If we go over an hour, just thus. But we've got questions that both these dear couples have prepared. And we're going to attempt to answer them tonight. And as we answer them to the, both the couples, we want this to be a blessing to you. Remember, uh, later on tonight, there's something coming up. And maybe, Portia, if you want to just explain to all the viewers what happened so that... Uh, Every one of them have to be attentive for what's going to take place tonight. Okay, so we have a bit of a surprise for you where we've got a competition for married couples. So unfortunately, if you are courting or um, even engaged, it's not for you. <laughs> it's for our married couples. So I think you have to listen carefully tonight because you're going to possibly hear the answer during Somewhere. the session. Okay. And so, but we'll ask you the question at the end of the session and the uh, fastest person to answer online and get it correct is going to win um, a lovely dinner for two, which has been sponsored by Sani Insurance Brokers. So we're so grateful for um, that sponsorship, sponsorship for the dinner and uh, yeah, okay. So <laughs> thanks Sani Insurance Brokers for the sponsorship for the dinner and yeah listen Good. up carefully all right so there you go dear folks you've heard it there's a competition that's coming up and there's a dinner for two up for grabs Sini insurance brokers have sponsored that and let's see what's who's going to be the winner later this evening so before i get the couples ready to introduce themselves the bible says in genesis chapter 2 verse 18 and i'm reading from the niv the lord said Lord God said, it is not good for the man to be alone. I will make him a helper suitable for him. Now the Lord God had fallen out of the ground, all the wild animals and all the birds in the sky, he brought them to man to see what he would name them. And whatever the man called each living creature, that was its name. So the man gave names to all the livestock, the birds in the sky, and all the wild animals. But for Adam, no suitable helper was found. So the Lord God caused man to fall into a deep sleep. And while he was sleeping, he took one of the man's ribs and then closed up the place with flesh. Then the Lord God made a woman from the rib he had taken out of the man and he brought her to the man. The man says, wow! No, 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 that's my translation. The man said, this is now bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh. And she shall be called woman, for she was taken out of man. And verse number 24, that is why a man leaves his father and mother and is united to his wife and they become one flesh. Adam and his wife were both naked and they felt no shame. So dear friends, we are getting ready right now to get into some of the questions. But before we do that, these couples are all ready. They're geared up. Some of them were singing when they walked. I don't know if I'm going to ask them to surprise you with a song, a special song that they sang to their partners before we're proposing and all of that. But let's see. So on my left hand side, we have a very dear couple that has been with us here at the church now since we've opened on the 4th of August 2000. And 19, they are no strangers to most of you. And uh, they are Darren Kiston and Tamlin Jade Chetty. And so I'm going to ask them to give you a formal introduction. And they will repeat their name, that's okay. They are like, they family to us now. We're in the church together, so I can give you their names. That's okay. But I'm going to ask you to introduce yourself, Darren, and then give Tamlin a chance. And tell the people who you are, a little bit about your background, and then we will go to the couple number two. Okay, I am Darren Kiston. Um, I live in Springfield, and I'm a civil engineer. Hi, everybody. Um, my name is Tamlin J. Chetty. Um, I'm from Chatsmith, and I'm a project coordinator. Okay, so there you have it. Hashtag... Darren, D-A-R-R-Y-N, 
and Tamlin, T-A-M-L-Y-N. Hashtag Darren Tamlin. Number one, let's send that. Hashtag Darren Tamlin. Now, let's go to couple number two. This is now... Okay, let me just explain this. Couple number one on my left-hand side have just, and as you can see by the advert, they've just recently proposed. So in other words, Darren, and he will tell us a little bit about what happened and how we did the proposal. And so, uh, the, and, and Tamlin said yes. And that is why they are here tonight. My couple number two on our right-hand side, they have been married during lockdown. They had a lock down wedding can you believe that and so let us now go over to darren and kaveshni and darren and kaveshni want to greet the viewers and just tell them who you are and a little bit about your background good evening everyone uh i'm darren woodley and i'm a pharmacist assistant hi everybody my name is kaveshni Mudli, and i live newlands west and i'm a diagnostic radiographer Okay, so there you have it. Now they're not going to get us so easy because they've got their questions ready and they, they're not doing any talking. But whole day, I must say, from the morning, Darren's been messaging, Pastor, I must, must, must say something. So I'm going to give him a chance today to say something. <laughs> I'm joking. I had to get him. Because, listen, this is family, this is fun. Darren's been messaging me, he says, Pastor, please don't put me on the spot. Don't worry, I won't do that. Now, Darren, a week, what, two weeks ago? Two weeks ago, we got the beautiful surprise and an invite to come and to witness, not the actual proposal, but the aftermath of that where we celebrated with them on their return. So, I want you to give us a background about how you proposed to Tamlin, and I wanted Tamlin to also return the compliment and explain to the viewers how did you feel when you heard that question. Go ahead. Okay. So the proposal, um, I'm planning it for from Jan, and it's been a lot of work. I had to sort of prepare Tamlin not to expect it. So every time she asked about marriage and the future, I'd tell her, um, no, maybe next year or maybe still saving up for money and stuff like that. And I know when it came to the proposal, she had no idea. Well, she'll tell you more about that. But, um, yeah, so the proposal started as a photo shoot. So in order for her to dress up, I had to give her an excuse. So <laughs> uh, we had the photo shoot at um, Shlanga Beach by the lighthouse. From there, I said, we have another, uh, another venue. Let's just go take a drive and try a photo shoot there. So we ended up going to Virginia Airport, and then she was shocked. She's like, why are we going here? <laughs> when she saw the helicopter, she was a bit uh, lost. <laughs> and then uh, we boarded the helicopter. Uh, we flew out to a mountain overlooking the Inan Dam. And we had a, a picnic. And while we had a picnic, well, after we had the picnic, we decided to do more photos. So I had the setup where she had to turn away from me and throw rose petals in the air. And every time I tried to get her to face the other way so I could take the ring out, she kept turning back. And I, it, was, it was so nerve-wracking. But eventually she faced the other way. She threw the petals in the air. And when she turned around, I was on my knees. And I asked her to marry me. And she said yes. And um, from there, we flew back to the airport. Um, at the hangar, our family were waiting for us. And they surprised us. Tamlin had no idea uh, that they were there as well. They surprised us, and we just had a small get-together, and that was it. Okay. <laughs> so there you have it. Very creative, very adventurous. And so I like that. I like that, the adventure in that whole proposal. Now tell me, you've got to tell us, how did you feel when Darren popped the question? Take us through that experience and what was going through your mind. Um, so because I didn't know that it was an engagement and I thought it was a photo shoot, I was completely taken aback. I was not expecting it and I didn't want to create expectation in my heart because I thought that if I did, I'm going to be disappointed if Darren doesn't propose to me. So the whole while we're driving um, 
to get to the beach and driving um, and when we took the helicopter to the mountain top I thought you know this is strange because it's, it's over the top but still in my heart I said do not create expectation because you'll get disappointed and when Darren asked me I was completely shocked because the photographer said throw the petals up in the air turn around and hug Darren and when I turned he was on one knee oh. <laughs> and it, it completely took me back and um, even when we got back to the hangar and to see my family there it was extremely emotional because um, when we were flying back I was thinking my heart I need to go home and share this experience with my family but we were so blessed to actually have them there and um, in, a, in a matter of a few minutes we could share that with them so I, I was extremely surprised extremely um, excited it was beyond anything I could have imagined yeah <laughs> Wow. so that goes down in history for that couple and uh, for those of you that are not married yet are still uh, trusting God for a, a life partner uh, you there's two brilliant couples here you're gonna hear story number two now on the proposal and you can get ideas there's ideas galore and let me say this Tamlin said something that she did not want to create an unrealistic expectation in case Darren is still going to wait another year. So she just went along with the ride. Sometimes in life, you've got to just go and enjoy the ride and trust God. God, who knows your end from your beginning, has already got in mind and got planned who the partner is for you. Who is your life partner? Who is your husband? Who is your wife? Is already there and it's already waiting to be manifested. So if you that are watching that are single and you're trusting God for a life partner and you want to get into marriage, we're going to be having a discussion about single and fulfilled, but also single and waiting to be married. We're going to be having many discussions like these. They are real discussions and we want to just talk about it and see how as a church we can be of help to bring this to a place where it is part of the divine plan of God. Because marriage is a union ordained by God. Marriage is a covenant that God ordains. And so, before I get into a preach, let us go to couple number two, love. And you remember when they told us the news, um, how they were planning, or not they, she did not know, Darren knew. So Darren Moodley, tell the viewers, how did you pre propose to your dear wife Kaveshni. Okay, so uh, Kaveshni didn't know what was going on, but she was always uh, on my case about doing a photo shoot. Uh, so one of my best friends is a photographer by profession. So I spoke to him and then I was planning it for some months and then I got in touch with her cousins from Johannesburg because it was around December time and they were coming down. So I had to I had to like make a plan of how to get busy on that day. So I coordinated with them. I phoned Pastor, and I phoned him and told him what I was about to do. I phoned him when I was at the jeweler, at the jeweler, in fact. <laughs> and uh, and then from there, I, I just said to you know we're going to do a photo shoot at uh, the park, and uh, your cousins from Johannesburg are coming. So I asked the photographer if he can do a shoot all of us. So she was like, uh, cool, so her cousins got her ready and everything in the morning. And then I got to the park, and then we did the setup. And then uh, we had the guys with the drones and everything in the park. And then there comes Kaveshni, and uh, we're busy doing this photo shoot. So the Jew made a, a ring box in the shape of a rose, and we put it into the bouquet. And Kaveshni was holding the bouquet, and... <laughs> The photographer told her, you know what, please turn towards me. And just like Tamlin, she didn't want to turn and look at the photographer. <laughs> so every time I wanted to reach in and grab this, uh, this flower, Kaveshni kept talking at me and, t and she told me, stop pulling the flowers. <laughs> so eventually, I just, I just grabbed the flower and she was like, what are you doing? And then I opened the box and I got down on one knee. And she was very shocked. Uh, luckily, she said yes. <laughs> and yeah, that's how I proposed to Kaveshni. Okay. 
You liked it? Well, that's couple number two. That's Darren, D-A-R-R-E-N, and Kavishni, K-A-V-E-S-H-N-I-E. So hashtag Darren and Kavishni. Let's see some of that coming in as well. We've got two Darren here tonight, Darren and Tamlin, and Darren and Kavishni. So right now, without much further ado, we get into the questions. And so, Portia, you are going to help me. Let me say this. If I did not have Portia with me on tonight's program, I would have messed this thing up. I can tell you this. She got everything set up, everything in order. And that is why you need your wife. You have to work hand in hand. Two hands slapped together. Some things I can do, she can't do. Some things she can do, I can't do. This is how marriage works. So we're going to hear more about that in a few minutes from now so love tell us where to from here what are we going to do so each couple is now going to start asking their questions we're going to ask one cu couple uh, we're going to ask one couple at a time their questions so that we just move between the two and Noel's going to give his um his thoughts on, on their question and then i will share but between us as well Okay, let's see. Who shall we go with on first? Let's go with couple number one. And first question is... Considering that we just, um, well, I just proposed and we are newly engaged, uh, the next step would be marriage. And what would be an ideal wedding size? Should it be small, big? Just ha get registered. What would you mm. recommend? <laughs> okay. So Darren wants to know what would be an ideal wedding size. That's a tough question there. Already. He's put me on the spot. He's given me a knockout <laughs> blow. Well, Darren, let me say this. An ideal wedding size is actually the size of your budget. It's not the size of how many friends and family you have. It's the size of your budget. And it must be something that is well thought of. And remember, when you are planning a wedding and you are looking at the number of people and all that, and you know you've got your family, your parents, and both of you uh, have your, your parents, uh, you, you've got to understand that it is hard and I know okay, parents they are a different role okay and we can talk about that later on but to the general folk out there your friends your family you can't please everyone right and you've got to know you've got to please yourself number one you've got to please your pocket number two and you've got to please your future number three cannot go and plan a wedding that's going to put you into debt and you'll hear a little bit more, and maybe we'll talk a little bit from some experience about the couple on the right of the lockdown wedding, and it just so happened. But, you know, anything is possible. But in terms of a wedding size, big wedding or small wedding, you know, many people ask these questions. When Portia and I were married, and now it's 25 years ago, we had how many? 700 700 people, 100 from my side, 600 from her side. <laughs> no, I'm joking. <laughs> and so we had 700 people on this list. And we were just at that time, we said, you know, we want on our parents and let's see. So they gave us names, we had names, we put all those names together and then it's amounted to 700. But things have changed drastically from them, from those days. So what do you want to say, love? Talk to the people about that. I think, uh, Darren and Tamlin, I think it should be more close family and those who are in your life, in the season of your life. Because mm. even though you're not sure who, whether these people who are in, in, in this time in your life, if they're going to be there for the next 10 or 20 mm. years, you don't know that, right? But they are close to you and they are there in the season of your life. And I remember with us, for our uh, wedding, we made a decision to choose um, family for our retinue mm. because they should be with us throughout all seasons, mm. you know. And, um, yeah, and so, I, yeah, I do believe it should be family and close people in the mm. season. 
Actually, you can hear the word family coming out pretty often tonight. And just as no surprise, I think. Yeah, okay. and I think also the reason why I say that is because it goes back to what Noel's saying. It's about a lot to do with budget. Mm -hmm. You don't, we'll talk about that. You don't want to, you know, go beyond your... Overcommit yourself. Overcommit yourself mm -hmm. at this stage. Um, and I can say that even when we got married, when we moved to our um, flat, we didn't have, like, I know this is a different topic, but we didn't have debt because we made a decision that the wing, we must be able to cope with it, you know? So we walked into marriage without debt. Yeah. And yeah. We, we faced ourselves as well. So in other words, we did not put an unrealistic date that put pressure on us. We set a date that we knew we were able to work towards. Yeah, and we started okay? saving. And so when you start to talk that level of language, you see that you are dealing with two responsible people and you've already made your transition, which we will talk about later on, and you then start to work toward it. So does that answer your question, Mary? Okay, good. Where are we going to? We're going to question okay. Uh, question number two, and that's coming from uh, Kaveshni. I see she's got the mic already. Go ahead. Okay, so what will be your advice on financial budgeting to all the married couples out there? Mm. <laughs> Number one, integrity and what you spend your money on. Before marriage, they say, it's your money and my money. After marriage, it is our money. And when you're talking about financial budgeting and talking about money in marriage, you know, from the word go, both Portia and I, we had decided from day one that everything goes into one pot. And by it going into one pot, we both knew what we had in that pot and therefore we could plan according to the what was the content in the pot. We did not plan beyond what was in the pot, we planned what was in the pot. Because one of the things that many young couples go into is a word called debt, D-E-B-T. And there is good debt and there is bad debt and you know that's a discussion for another time but you don't want to go into unnecessary debt when you're going to marriage and um, when you are dealing with your with your finance there has to be a word called transparency so in other words i must be transparent to portia portia must be transparent with me i must know what portia earns she must know what i earn you see and we must be able to be open and honest and trust each other and we must start to talk about this why because we are building our marriage we are not building our parents marriage or a marriage that what people think of us we are building a marriage on what we know we want based on what god thinks of us does it make sense and so i've also got a note there talking about uh, uh, building your foundations and you know uh, there are certain foundations that you have to look at when you are looking at your budgeting and you know one of the things is uh, medical medical aid now is something that is a necessity you know it was luxury before now you need it because you know and you understand and you see what's going on right now in our nation and without medical aid it is very hard to get a decent medical attention and then there's also things like investments and taking out policies and all of that. And you start that at a young age. I remember when I first got my first job and um, my first salary when I took it home, my mother then took that money and she took out my tithe. And I had to take my tithe. And from then on, I knew that my tithe belonged to God. And every month she taught me how to take my tithe and give it to God. And then there's also something called the snowball effect. You want to explain what the snowball effect? Can you remember you and I spoke about it? Or do you want me to talk you about it? Snowball effect is something that we've learned some time back. That if you get into a place, and this is for married couples now, and if you have a lot of debt going, 
you start with your smallest debt. You start to take a little extra money and you pay your smallest debt first. While you are still paying your other debt. Then when your smallest debt is paid, you don't have a disposable income. You don't take that and go and spend it on something else. Take that and get on to your next biggest debt. And plow that money into that. And then you start paying more into that together with whatever you were paying. So you're increasing what you are paying to pay off that debt. Eventually that will get paid off and you will jump into that and go into the third debt. And eventually what happens is it continues. It flows from there. Eventually you write the whole thing off and it will take a good couple of years. It will also, uh, it is a commitment that you have to make. You have to be decisive about that and stick to the plan. And uh, I'm just reminded, it's Dave Ramsey that we learned that from, and you can Google it. He gives a lot of advice on financial matters, particularly with married couples. Uh, also, if I may conclude on this, you must always, when you are dealing with your money, you must understand firstly that that is God's money. It's not our money. It is God's money. And God entrusts us with that money on how to manage it while we're here on earth. If we hold on to that money, and if we start to make that money more important than God, then what happens is that becomes an idol in our lives. We must always be givers. We must always have an open hand. If we see a need of sunny need, go and help the person. Go and be a giver. And when God trusts you and He sees that He can trust you as you're a giver, He knows that your faith is in Him. And as you sow, so shall it come back to you. You must understand that. And it is a very important aspect, particularly young couples starting off. You've got to get your foundation right. Portia, what do you have to add on that? <laughs> yeah, I've got quite a few things yes. to me. But, of course, there's still so much learning in every area that I'll be talking about today. But I would really say, um, Darren and Kavishti, and you do as well, don't live beyond your means. That is a big deal that I think we have um, really tried to live out. You know, um, if you are in doubt and feel that um, you're not sure whether to buy certain things, you, you'd rather do without, okay? Don't buy, if you, if you don't have those priorities right as to what is first, what comes first, then, then that would be a challenge because you need to take care of the priorities and that is obviously all those things that are first and foremost and then you can actually then commit to actually spending money more on things that you would want, not necessarily need. And um, you know, I know there were times that we made decisions that, where we didn't even buy gifts for ourselves because we chose to channel that money into something that we believed was more important. Mm. It's not that we don't like gifts or something, it's just like, you know, when we want something we know We'd like to get it then if it's, if it's really necessary. But it's not like we have to go and now spend um, money that we may not even necessarily have just so that I can buy you the best birthday present and a few gifts and you just go overboard, you know. So we never chose that route, I would say, over the years. And, um, and you know, sometimes I feel it is, um, it's okay to like nice things in life. Um, that's pretty normal, um, but I think that you want nice things. There's always so many things that have to be a priority first. Mm -hmm. And um, in order to have the priority and the nice things, uh, you really got to work hard, I would say, to be able to get all that. Mm -hmm. You know, put God first and work hard consistently in your job so that you grow in your jobs, you know, in terms of rewards there. Um, and that would obviously grow your income to be able to take care of everything, you know, even though the, that figure always, that need becomes more and more and more as the family grows. And, um, and us, one of the things that we did uh, or we do, we practice is if we don't have the money to do something, we actually don't do it. If we decide we want to go wherever, and we don't, we would not, uh, we always plan for it, you know, so we, we don't want to, we've tried the credit cards and we've learned the hard way, you know. Um, yeah, so try not to do the credit cards if you, if you don't have to. Um, 
one of the lady preachers who I follow, uh, Christine Kane, she, she made this statement in one of her preachers. She said, don't ask God for more money. Ask Him for wisdom to be able to manage the money that you do have. Okay? And um, save. Even from now, start saving, even if it's a little bit, um, just start something somehow. And um, I would say, like, we, we've done this 52-week um, savings. I don't know if you heard of it. You start with 10 rand only, and every week it grows. And so then at the end of that, you can take that money and you can use it for something, whether it's, yeah, whatever, you know. And that's what we do, and so that's money that's out of the normal situation, which you save. And sometimes I know people will say, but life is so tough, and, you know, we can't pay. How, how, do, how are we expected to save when we can't meet up, our current, meet up our current bills? We can't pay our bond, we can't pay our rent, we can't pay our car installment, we can't pay our tithes. And I would just like to... Maybe encourage you to maybe reassess one's financial situation as maybe we can downscale that car, mm. you know. Maybe not go into that level of car mm. or a house um, if we can't really afford it, if we haven't met the priorities mm. first. Cool. And then just one example that I have here with us um, on the whole uh, topic is that Noel and I have traveled, overseas, have traveled overseas individually for our jobs, but even 25 years later, we have not traveled overseas as a couple. Now, that may be a surprise to many people because many people travel, you know, and that wasn't because we never had the finances to travel. We actually, we actually did from very early in our marriage we both did relatively well in our jobs, but we chose the, priority, the priorities that we made a decision on in our life. Um, that, that came last. I mean, sure. not that. I mean, our personal overseas plan trips came last. Um, it was secondary. And so, so yeah, so, so we've been planning a trip now, I would say, for the 25 years, but then COVID happened. So that's going to have to wait again. <laughs> but I'm just trying to say that it's important to prioritize um, what is really important in marriage. Because, yeah, that's it. Good. All right. Thank you, love. Is that okay? <laughs> now let's go to the next question. Who's going to ask it? Tamlin? Okay. So based on the topic of the wedding, what are your views on the prenuptial agreement uh, and getting married in community of property? Now, you know, the whole issue with the uh, prenup and the COP, community of property weddings, uh, that's really, you know, become a bone of contention and what is meant to be a blessing just ends up in a whole negative, negative downward spiral if it's not understood. You know, it's so important to understand first. That is why I think one of the books that we read, the author was talking about seeking first to understand before you can respond. And to understand it, uh, there's a song that also goes, understanding is the best thing in the world between a boy and a girl. Um, and I guess that the more we understand, the better we can respond and can plan. So the issue of the ANC and the COP, um, there are several couples that are going the route of choosing to have the anti-nuptial contact in place. And you get a lot of people fighting that and saying, but why and what do you have? No uh, faith that your marriage is going to last, etc. And it's got nothing to do with divorce. An ANC contract has got nothing to do with divorce. It's got everything to do with, as a couple, if you're getting into a business and later on down the line, it is a business decision that you take where you want to safeguard your personal uh, uh, assets as a couple 
because should something go wrong with the business, it does not affect the couple, it affects the individual who's named the business on. And so things like the house and the car and all of that are still safe. You understand? So it is a mature decision that you take. And you know, on that same sub subject, I had out there, uh, where is that love? Uh, yes. It's a, fact, it's, a, it's a fact of life that money can create huge conflict. Prenups can be born from distrust or poor faith in the longevity of the marriage. In fact, prenups themselves can cause such confrontation that they can even lead to separation before marriage, if not understood. That's why it has to be discussed and spoken. And both the boy and the girl in your case, not husband and wife yet, boy and the girl in your case, has to understand. And Tamlin has got to be happy. Darren has got to be happy. You understand? And that's what marriage Yes, that's what marriage is about. It's about making each other happy. My job as a husband is to make sure that Portia is happy. If I get up and or I come home and Portia is not happy, I've got to find out now what on earth did I do wrong? I'm just joking. But how do I make Portia happy? You understand? As a couple, my job is to keep Portia happy and her job is to keep me happy. Now in the same vein, you look at that when you are planning and you're looking at your wedding with ANC and COP, and if your spouse is saying, spouse-to-be is saying, hey, you know what, now this thing is not looking good, you need to give your spouse the assurance, whether it's the husband-to-be or the wife-to-be, that it is not about money and I want to safeguard myself. No. If that is the case, then do something for them, whether it's the boy or the girl, and put in an investment for them. You understand? Put in an investment so they can see there's something in it for them. Because at the end of the day, you both, when you walk down the aisle, you take your vows, you become one flesh in the eyes of God. You understand? You become one flesh. Is that okay? Love, do you have anything to say on that? Mm -hmm. Just that um, when you make this, deci this decision, it should be a decision made by both. And so if anything goes wrong along the way, there should never be the guilt, you know, big blame game going on. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And I like what someone just said there on the program right now. There has to be trust. Trust between both couples, between both the parties. You have to trust each other. And trust is something that is not uh, born overnight. Something you don't get in a week or two or a month or two. Trust is a lifetime. And you cannot break trust. You understand? It is built it is nurtured, it's, uh, it's hard work. Actually, when Portia and I were talking, we said marriage is hard work, which you'll hear about in a few minutes. Okay, is that okay for you, Darren? All right, thank you. Let's go to the next question. You want the easy one or the hard one? <laughs> Give me the <laughs> easy one, Darren. <laughs> okay. Uh, how do you compromise, for example, when it comes to both sides of the families? Uh, let's just say in terms of uh, what family do you visit more or less? Oh, that's easy. I can give you answers without even thinking. You visit your family more. <laughs> Mother-in-law is watching. I'm sorry, mother-in-law. Anyway, no. Listen, when you become one flesh and when you become husband and wife, it is no longer, hey, my family and your family. When I married Portia, and many people argue this. Hey, you, you married Portia, didn't marry a family. No, I married a family too. They became my family. They became my parents. They became my siblings and vice versa. My siblings and my parents have become Portia's parents and Portia's siblings. And that's how it is. And you, listen, it's not going to be perfect every day. You're going to make a mistake now and then. But if you do make a mistake and it particularly in early stages of marriage and it's Mother's Day and you go and you buy something special. You didn't tell Kaveshni what you bought for your mother. World War Three when you come home. You understand? But as time goes on, you'll find you and Kaveshni will both go and choose the gifts. Same with you. And by both of you going and seeing the gifts, what is happening? You are now working as a team. They say teamwork makes the dream work. 
There's no secrets in marriage. Is that okay? There's no secrets in marriage. So, uh, his question was, how do you compromise, for example, when it comes to both sides of the family? So, uh, when you are marrying your spouse, I told you that you are marrying the family, and it's also going to be a give and a tick. You are not going to please everyone every time. Darren and Kaveshni and Tamlin, you are not going to please everybody every time. There's going to be days when some of them are going to be unhappy. You just got to do the kind thing. You understand? Just be nice. Don't keep record of wrong. The Bible speaks about, uh, uh, in the book of Corinthians, do not keep record of wrongs. In other words, don't have a black book. Don't just, every time your wife makes a mistake, your husband makes a mistake, you go and make a note and you're keeping a record. So that when you have an argument, you've got your ammunition to take out. No. When you forgive her, that black book gets thrown away and burnt and thrown into the fire. There's no black book when it comes to love. Love overlooks wrong. And I can give you a full sermon on that. Come on Sunday to the marriage class. Uh, but I'm serious with that. Love keeps no record of wrongs. What have you got to say? I would say um, treat both families equally. That is what we've done over the many years. And don't let any side of the family feel like they are being treated differently to the other. And um, I think your spouse would also appreciate when they see you treating their family um, you know, in the same way that you treat your own family. And that would be a wonderful thing. And if you're both operating on the same way, then everybody's going to actually be happy. And I think that um, with us, um, like if you look at our phones, okay, if that's, that's Noel's phone and even my phone. He can go on to my phone. I can go on to his phone at any time. We know each other's passwords. And uh, there's never a time, I don't ever have to feel any anxiety or fear, and neither does he, mm -hmm. that we are speaking badly about each other's family to family or, or friends or anybody because that just doesn't happen because it's not in our hearts to do that you know and so um, I think that that is good because um, it will also protect you because you will um, it will grow you as an individual because you'll be operating with a clean heart a pure motive every time it must be sincere you know if, like when it comes to even gifts you do the same that's it. It just must be the norm. It's not, not even um, an issue. Who gets a better word? It's, it mustn't even be an issue. It must just be, mm. it's the right thing to do. Yeah. If I may just use those simple words. It's the right thing to do. Treat both families equally. Good. Good. I like what Portia said, um, and maybe to all of our views out there, you know, this is a, a, a concern that we are seeing, and when we go into our marriage classes proper, when lockdown ends, we're going to be dealing with this. But husbands and wives, you by now, you should know each other's PIN codes for your phone. You should know each other's PIN codes for the back hearts. That should be no secret, husbands and wives. When you are married, you both become one flesh. And there's no such thing as, I can't, it's company policy. I, hey, your wife comes before your company. When you walk down and took your vows with her, that is priority over your company. There is something called a divine order. Now I can speak with authority over the subject because I've walked this path for 25 years. I've made mistakes in the 25 years and I've mixed up the divine order. The divine order in any marriage is number one, it is God first. After God comes your Family, that means your wife and your children. After your children and your, I mean your wife and your, your children, after that, number three comes your job, and number four comes serving in church. And guess what? In my elementary years, Portia will tell you, and this lady, I, I owe her too much, because she was so understanding, because she saw the love that I had for the Lord, and in my serving, but I was also immature in doing that, where I was overzealous, and I mixed up my divine order. 
guess what? God wasn't even first. Serving was before God in some months of mugging up. And that's how we can make mistakes. Always remember the divine is God first, your family second, your job third, and then serving number four. And that is the order. And when you give, yes, there are days when you can mix it up, but make sure that you do not run on overdraft. You've got to make deposits. What deposits? Emotional deposits in each other's account. You can't go and run on overdraft. I can't go and if I haven't made emotional deposits into Portia's account. I can't go and have a withdrawal. I can't go and say, love, can I get a kiss? She won't give me any kiss because I'll never give any affection. And listen, that discussion goes very deep. And we can discuss that at another time, another place. But let's leave it right there. Okay, let's go to the next question. Um, the next question we have is, um, is it okay to have personal goals um, in light of the two of us becoming one? Um, and if I can give you an example, um, what if one of our career paths uh, requires us to move out of the country? Should we be selfish and ask, ask our partner to leave their job and come with us? Or do we um, compromise and say, okay, I, I, I'll refuse the promotion and I'll stay here? to start that or you okay uh, you know uh, Tamlin's asked is it okay to have personal goals definitely you must have personal goals because as you grow you start to complement each other and uh, by complementing each other you do not compete with each other now if I may say that when Porsche and I were first married we were both in companies and we're doing pretty well. We were climbing the corporate ladder. We came from families that were, uh, you know, our parents did this for us. And they brought us to a certain level. And, you know, as many of us youngsters now, we want to go and we want to do better. And so the company that I was in and the company that Paul was in was very good to us. But it wasn't only them being good to us. We had to work hard. We wanted to work hard for a reason. Why? Because we did not want to just be mediocre or average. We wanted to grow. And in growing, we said that we want to make sure that we want to reach certain levels. We've had certain goals and certain plans. And you all know you have your short term, your medium term, your long term goals. And that can be individually and it can be for a couple. Okay? But your goals have got to complement each other. I remember every time there was a promotion that came for me, every time. And the promotion came outside of our province. I had to go down to Cape Town, Port Elizabeth, Johannesburg or whatever. I had the first thing, the first thing I knew that, and Portia knew from an early start, and this goes, and there's no particular order. There were two things, two factors in our lives. And different things will apply to different people. But the two factors that were very strong in our life was, number one, was God and church. Number two was family. Mm -hmm. Right? And so we not want to take any promotion outside of the province that would see us going away from our family. We felt we wanted to be close with family. And more so on my side, I knew that my dream is to one day be full time in church. And that was from a very young age when I came into uh, working. In fact, I remember going for certain job interviews after my first company. And they asked me, Noel, so how long do you think you'll be in this company if you get this job? And I remember telling a panel of uh, interviewers that one day, I said, I don't know. They said, what do you mean? I said, because my real dream is to be in the church. They said, oh. So I said, I don't know. I could be uh, two years, two months, two weeks, or 20 years. You know, and guess what? I did not get the job. But be that it may, God knows the plans of a man's heart. There are many other plans in the mind of a man, but ultimately it's the plan of the Lord that prevails. So when we discussed it as a couple, we had to come to an understanding. And I had to respect what Portia wanted. She had to respect, and there's a word called compromise. We had to come to a compromise and meet each other halfway. And that is why when you're finding 
and looking for life partners. Those of you that have not found one yet, you've got to make sure that the foundation, which is the values and all that life is built on, and which we believe as Christians founded on the word, you've got to make sure that that person has a foundation that is conducive with the foundation you are used to in growing up, so that you start to come complement each other. Is that okay? Is there anything I've missed, love? What would happen? Well, we did. We didn't take the jobs. Why? So that's the Tamlin's question. Hey, I'm glad <laughs> I got my wife next to me. Love, just <laughs> explain that. So, you know, we were in a similar situation, but you, you're asking a question where it's international now, okay? But we were in the situation, we were both uh, offered opportunities in, in, in Gauteng, and I know with you it was Cape Town as well. But uh, we made the decision to stay, right? Because we actually, our, part of our, sh our shared, um, our plan was we had a shared mission and a shared purpose and we, we, we believed in the same things, which we believed was going to be in KZN. So with you now asking that question, obviously it's international. If you all have a shared mi mission that, you know, one day we do want to go overseas, then is this going to get all to that? So it may be a bit different, you know. Right. So your so, goals that contribute towards that. Yes. yes. And do we want the same outcomes in life? So even though you may have individual goals, are we getting to a shared, something that's shared? Why are you working so hard, Darren? Why do you want to take that promotion overseas? Is it going to get us to that end uh, goal, which is a shared thing? It's, even though it's us individually, but it's getting to what you want as a cu cu couple um, for your family and for your future. Right. Now, let me help them with our decision when we first got married. This will help you. It's not international, like Portia said. It's local. But when I first met her, she's from Durban, I'm from Maritzburg. Mm -hmm. My family and friends said, hey, you can't leave Maritzburg and go to Durban. She's got to come here. So I'm thinking, <laughs> no love. Not Sleepy Hollow, beautiful city of Peter Maritzburg. And so I had to make a decision to come down to Durban. And so I thought then, and you know when you, with all your friends, and you all know this term, petticoat government, which I preach on often when I'm talking on marriage, you can't get governed by your friends, dear people, because your friends are not in your marriage. It is you and your wife that's in the marriage. And so when I made the decision, then I said, God, I'm going to Durban. I never even dreamt of leaving Peter Maritzburg. I always saw my life in Peter Maritzburg growing up and then getting into whatever God wants me to in PMB. And then I took that step of faith. And now, 25 years later, look at what God's done in our life. You understand? And I must say, leaving Peter Maritzburg, a place of comfort, coming down to Durban, getting planted in the church that we were in Overport, learning all that we did, as we've always explained, both Portia and I from the previous church with Conquering to Pray Ministers. Much that we've learned of, and as we've grown, and as we start to uh, serve together, learn together, grow together, actually all of that contributed to where we are today. So it is, right now, it may seem that to have a dream and it may seem that okay there may not be agreement now but you will find in God's time God makes all things beautiful and things start to open up and you see things differently and that's how God works you cannot see everything at once now if we could then our life and walk with God would not be so hard it would be so easy We'll all plan, we'll all know what's going to happen, we'll all preempt everything and we'll guess and yes, it'll happen. No, that's why faith comes in. Because our journey with God is a journey of faith. And that is what it is for us as couples. It is a journey of faith. Okay, did you answer love? Yeah, you did. did. Is that okay, Tamla? And I think that 
it's important to serve together and it's already evident that both these couples here, they serve together. I think that's so healthy because that's part of a shared mission. You know, you're on the same, you're going and heading in the same direction, no, not in different directions and, you know. You see, when we got married, I explained to Portia how important church is to me. Church was very important to her. She was also very involved in all the departments, Sunday school, youth and all of that, and regular attendance to church. And so when we got married, I said, you know what, church is important and that is priority to me to such an extent that I had to, I had to, literally, in our elementary years of marriage, before our first son was born, Alaric, and even while he was born, after he was born, every Sunday I'll be in church, she'll be at home, I'll be gone to church early, getting everything ready with the teams there and serving and then she will come later on and get the church. Actually, we made a comment once that we can count on maybe one or now maybe two hands in all our 25 years. How many times we went to church as a 24 years then. We went to church as a family together. You understand? Because I always went first and went early. Was that a good thing or bad thing? No, I don't think it is. You can judge it as a good thing or bad thing. It was a decision we made. She, she had given me her blessing, and then with me keep, kept, keep on going out, I had to make sure that I had to also come and pay back at home. So whenever I had my time, I could not take my phone and take calls and run here and go there. I have to now go and give the family time. But it is something that we don't, we are not perfected yet. We are still working on that. Even now that we are running our church, it's a whole different ballgame. I can manage my time. And now I'm making it priority that Portia and the children get our time and get priority. So, just answering Tamlin's question. Personal goals, highly important. You keep your personal goals, but they must complement each other. There's no competition between the both of you. Both of you are young professionals. There's no competition. You are both when you say, yes, I do, I do, at the altar you become one, your both dreams and your goals become one. Individually, they must contribute towards a common, common goal and end. Good. Who's next? We've got a few more questions. We are over time, but just stay with us. I can see that the program is going, is going very well. And thank you for staying online. So let's go to couple number two, Darren and Kaveshni. Okay, so, as a married couple, how do you motivate or support each other? Oh. Okay. Love, do you want to go first? Okay. Um, I would say celebrate their successes and be their best critic. Okay? Because you are the person that they trust the most. So they should value your opinion. And if you have this something to say to each other, if you're giving your opinion or your feedback, I would suggest using the sandwich method. I'm not sure if you know what that is. It's a, it's a work term that you learn where you give the good and then you give the not so good and then you give the good again. Okay. And um, in, that, yeah, you're, in that way your spouse will appreciate you and they'll value your opinion. Okay. Um, how do you motivate and support each other is what Kaveshni had asked. By making a decision to commit to being married. Number one. When you made the decision to be married, you committed and that's a decision you've taken. You haven't guessed, you haven't dreamt about it. You made that decision. Hamlin is the girl and there's no other girl. Darren, when you walked down the aisle and you said yes, I do to Kaveshni, at the same time you said, no, I don't to everybody else. Does it make sense? In other words, she is your priority. Nobody else is. And you must understand that. And in the elementary weeks and months and years of marriage, there will be teething problems. Because that is part of the journey of marriage. Otherwise, this whole journey that we go on with the Lord, if, if God had given and said marriage is a bed of roses, the moment you say I do, you in heaven. Things don't work that way. People talk about fairy tale weddings. 
fairy tale marriages. There's no fairy tale marriages. Life has to throw you problems. Why? Because that's what makes you stronger. That's what builds you. That's what gets you wiser and teaches you so that you can get stronger as a couple. Now, to, by making a decision to commit to being married already indicates that you understand and support each other's goals. Otherwise, it would be a problem before marriage. Motivating and encouraging each other should then come naturally. And you must be sincere if you want your spouse to succeed. When you are complimenting and motivating them, it must be done sincerely. Not just uh, what they say um, by word and you don't mean it. You must mean it. It must be sincere. And you must be the biggest cheerleader. I gave the example to Portia the other day. I said, love, you know I'm your biggest cheerleader. She says, yeah, remind me. I said, when you started. Now remember, Portia wasn't on the front of the church. I was always serving and busy with church. And then when we opened the church, we had to come and break out of a shell. And she's still breaking out of a shell. I'm trying to crack a few pieces every day, but you know, that's how it goes. But she has to break out of a shell and come to the fore. Why? Because Darren, you have giftings. And not only you, Tamman has giftings. And same with you, Darren and Kaveshni. It's not all about you, mister. It's also about her. Her giftings have to come to the fore. And we as husbands have got to understand that. And we must not get jealous if our wives have a gifting. Support them. So when Portia started with pause with Portia, guess what I did? Alaric used to get all the technical stuff together. I'll take the chair and put there. I'll make sure Elena makes the tea. Because we're in lockdown now. So everyone is at home. I'll make sure the tea is there. I'll say, love, is everything okay? And then I'll understand and watch. She says, no, please, you'll put me under pressure. You make me nervous. I must go inside. So I had to go inside the house. She sits outside and she runs it. But I made sure that she was all set and ready. After she's done, I come and say, hip, hip, hooray. And be her biggest cheerleader. Same like what mother says every time someone's birthday takes place. Hip, hip, hooray, Diana. So does that make sense? Okay, what do you want to say, love? No, no, it's a, I've said it already. Celebrate this. Oh, you start. Say, yeah, I start. All right. Darren, Tamlin, what else have you got? How many more questions do you have, by the way? Two more. You got two more. And you? Two more. two more. Okay. So, guys, it's just about quarter past now. They've each got two more questions. We're going to go through those two more questions. Then we're going to go through the competition. And let's see who's the winner tonight of that beautiful dinner sponsored by Sini Insurance Brokers. So, let's see. Tamlin, go ahead. Um, okay, our next question is, um, we know that falling in love is relatively easy, mm. but how do, you, how do you stay in love after years of marriage, given the only constant in life is change? When I was walking in here, I sang a song, Here Comes the Bride, but after that, I sang another song. I forgot now. I was singing this morning. <laughs> what is that? Oh, you know what how it goes? I forgot now. Can you see? This is what happens when you marry for 25 years. You sing a song all day and then in the evening you forget it. Someday when I'm all alone and the world is cold I will feel a glow just thinking of you and the way you look Tonight, I sang that song this morning. Porsche said, how are you singing that song? It came in my spirit. I was singing it. But I also remembered we're dealing with marriage. Sometimes you've got to be spontaneous. You have got to make sure that your marriage is not dull. It's not repetitive. You must add some flavor, some color to it. And it doesn't mean you have to sing. No. No. You can do many other things. Listen. You 10 out of 10 for the helicopter and taking on a mountain. Yeah, actually, she said, no, I know what you would have done. Yeah. <laughs> you see how naughty we are. Good. Right. But just to answer your question, falling in love is a decision. And that decision comes back to what the Bible speaks about in the book of Corinthians. It is not something you think or plan of. It is a choice decision that you make. Imperfect beings on this journey, no matter what 
you don't like about your spouse, which was your choice and your decision. Also, it comes back to your vows. When you said, I do, for better, for worse, in sickness and in health, for richer, for poorer, you remember those vows. Because you cannot say that now when things are not going right, you want to end things, you want to fight, you say go back to your house and all that nonsense. No, you in this together to make it work. Right? And so in our home, I don't, um, uh, I'm not scared to give uh, Portia a kiss in front of the kids. Actually, I even do it in front of her family and all that. Before I used to fright, because you know, father was very cheeky. But eventually as I grew, I said, hey, this is my wife. I've got to show my affection to her also in public. Okay, in church, I know sometimes I can't give her a kiss and all that because you mess around in church. But I can hold the hand. I can hold the hand in public. I can hold the hand if we're walking in the mall. If I see my friends, I mustn't leave a hand and run away. You know, when you first get married, you want to be motto. Ha! Ah, it doesn't work like that. This is your wife, dear men. And your wife has got to be loved. And ladies, your husband has got to be loved. You've got to show him affection. You know, I talk about the five needs of a man and the top five needs of a woman. We're going to do that in one of the marriage courses as we go along. You'll be amazed at how those top five needs complement and work with each other. If you don't give the number one need for a man, you're not getting the number one need for a woman, and it goes hand in hand. It's amazing how God has designed us as husband and wife and human beings. So, does that answer your question? Um, and what else did I want to say? Yeah, so, you've got to make your relationship and give it spice sometimes. And I know sometimes we come from backgrounds where hey, you feel shy now with the Indian community, and A, hey, you don't want to do this in front of you. You're building, your kids are seeing the terms of endearment, you know what it's doing? It's giving them stability. It's saying, hey, my dad loves my mom. My mom loves my dad. They are strong together. Come what may. You understand? The last thing you want is in some homes where there's no strength here and the poor children suffer. And what you are doing spiritually, you are planting bad seed. And then those are the things now that eventually follow you. So you've got to break it in your actions. And they say, actions speak louder than? Words. Words. Say it again. Words. No, no, whole thing. <laughs> actions speak louder than words. So I'm going to see you holding Kavesh in his hand and giving a kiss after church and all of that. I'm giving these couples big pressure. Why? Because they're on the platform. They're going to lead by example with us. That's how it's got to be, dear friends. We have to be real. Okay. Is that fine, Tamlin? You happy with that? Let's go to couple number two. Oh, sorry, sorry. Portia wants to add something. Okay. So just, I would say, take care of each other's needs, whatever they may be. That's how you can, in many years from now, the marriage is still sound. And, you know, you've spoken about the top um, five needs of a man and a woman already. But I would just like to say, ladies, just take care of your man and men. And, and, and ladies, take care of yourselves as well. You know, I think that's what we have to do um, to keep our marriage strong. But at times when things are not so great, I just still say what you say where it goes back to the vows. For better or for worse, you know. So why should anything change um, you feel about your wife? You rather work on the thing that's messing you up as a couple and uh, work on that because you got married forever. Okay. You know, the reality is, some guys think when they see their girlfriend, that's how she's going to look forever. Even when she gets up in the morning, she's going to look like that. Hey, if you're not married yet, <laughs> let me give you some advice. When your wife gets up in the morning, she looks different. <laughs> She looks different to when she went to bed the night before. Why? 
because when you're sleeping, you are sleeping with the blanket, you're on the bed and everything. Same with you, when you get up in the morning, do you look like a film star? You don't. You look like someone your wife wants to run away from. So, don't think what's good for the goose is also good for the gander. Is that okay? And it is not about looks. Because if you marry, oh goodness, what is that we read the other day? I got it there, I got it there. Let me read that. I want you to listen to this. You got it there. Marrying someone based on his or, or her look alone is like buying a house based on its paint job. Do not allow the paint job to distract you from the foundation. It's easier to change the paint than it is to change the foundation. Therefore, choose the right person. Find someone who loves God more than you. I tell all young couples that. You want to fall in love with someone? Fall in love with someone who loves God more than you. You'll at least be on the winning track. Right, next question. Is that your final now? Or you got no. two? You got one more. Right, go ahead. How do you manage four children and still find the time for each other after 25 years? <laughs> oh gosh, okay, so... Where is it? Sorry. This is an area that we're still working on. Okay? Um, we're in a time in our lives where um, I would say I've never seen him as much <laughs> as I have. And it's actually so incredibly beautiful. Um, even though we are working together, um, sometimes people may not enjoy that. But me, it's early days and I loving the time that we are spending together, even if it is work. And, um, you know, we also courted as a couple, Maritzburg and Durban. So mm. we've never had, um, I would say, quality time. Because the moment we got married, uh, we were planted and you became extremely active in, in ministry. And um, so for me now, I actually feel a bit like a newlywed. <laughs> so I'm with you <laughs> but, and so I'm um, yeah so right now uh, even though we get so busy but it's still a wonderful experience at the moment we try and find some time for each other yeah let me tell you what I'm learning right now I haven't mastered it but I've come a long way and I've been given this advice many years even previously to I want you to do this. Hashtag no. Say that. Hashtag N-O. Learn that word tonight. Husbands, learn to say no to your friends. No to your company. I understand work is important. But if it is after hours and all of that, there is priorities, my friend. Your family is your priority. The company will always be there family may not be there you need to build them and grow I'm learning to say no you understand because when I say no to so, to to yes just explain that if you say no to what you need to say no to you are saying yes to us Correct. and if I'm saying no to them that means I'm saying yes to everything else. So in other words, priority. So how do we handle four children? <laughs> By the grace <laughs> of God. Listen. And great difficulty. <laughs> <laughs> We've got a beautiful set of kids, all four of them. And all four of them are unique in their own ways. We are learning about them every single day. They teaching us things, we teaching them things. And as Portia and I both acknowledge and we know we are not a perfect couple. We are far from perfect. We don't have it all made. We have problems and challenges just like you. The only difference is we've got the giftings of being pastors and we're running a church and that is a grace that's upon our lives. But does it mean that now because we are pastors that we are problem free? No. We go through the same challenges. Why? It's because every single one of us are on this journey together. And so our kids that we have, that God has blessed us with, and that's a whole subject for another day as well, and is, is, 
each one of them unique. One of the things we've started, and I must uh, give this sh uh, shout out to Pastor Peter DeFin, who gave me this counsel a while back, and he says, no, you must date your children. Actually, uh, I remember that whole discussion, and it was, well, it was with Pastor Clive at the stage, and he says, he actually told me, talk to Peter, he's got some advice on how to handle kids. And so we started to date our children one kid a week. So in other words, every Friday, we date one child a week. Okay? Some days, weeks we miss, but then we like to catch up. So we take them on a date. Doesn't have to be a big date. Can be a small, you know, just go out for an ice cream or for a cup of coffee or just for a walk in the park, play stuff. And that is what we're doing. Are we perfect? No. Are we the perfect family? No. But we are trying, and with the help of God, we will get better. Who's next? Um, okay, so how do you handle disappointed family members when making couple decisions? Darren, as much as you would like to please people, you can't please anyone. That you learn as you go. And because, you know, especially when it's coming to like planning a wedding, it's your day. And it's not about your family and friends, it's about your personal memories and what you hold near and dear to your heart. And what Tamlin holds near and dear to heart, you hold. And you've got to respect what she holds near and dear. And see what he holds near and dear. You've got to respect that. You understand? Because that is how making emotional deposits into each other's account. And so it's okay to consider the opinions of family and friends sometimes. But at the end of the day, if you don't take their advice on some things, they mustn't carry an offense. Offense is subject. We're going to do a whole series on that subject at some stage. But... They mustn't take offense. They must realize that it's your day. It's not their day. Our parents had their weddings. So when we get married, it's our wedding, not their wedding. You see? And so just be kind in everything. Disappointments must not become setbacks for them. And they must get over it and get over the offense. So uh, you will get disappointments in family. But don't build on that. Don't uh, make an altar on that. Don't harp on that. Just... Uh, the, the, and I'll talk about it before we conclude. Forgive, forget, move on. Life is too short. And if someone wants to harbor anything, let them harbor it. They will understand. You can't carry a trailer all your life. You'll burn your eyes after the first week. You won't enjoy the ride. If it, in relation to the um, reference to the wedding, okay, I would say that you must show those who maybe can't attend the wedding uh, because of your restricted numbers, show them that you still care and you, you, know, you do care for them. You can ha either um, invite them to a family dinner or when you're having your Thanksgiving, if you're going to have one, you can sh still include them in the wedding hall affair without them actually coming to the wedding itself. And they should not, as you said, take offense. They should hopefully understand because your relationship with them is not de shouldn't be dependent on whether they get invited to the wedding or not. Sure, sure. You know. But you know, I want to just add their love, you know, and your parents are important. Always remember, the Bible says honor your parents. And honor is a subject that is You've got to understand. So you've got to honor them. You've got to listen to them. You can't disrespect them. But at the same time, they also understand that it is now going to be time to leave and cleave. They know that too. It's in the word. You understand? And there comes a time in a man's life when he has to turn away from his mother's arms and into the arms of his wife. <laughs> Am I being poetic? <laughs> But it's reality. It is reality and we've just got to mature up, grow up and understand how these things work. Is that okay? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, is that, you want more? No, done. You're done. Yeah. Okay. Okay, so our last question to you all is, what is the secret to achieving 25 years of marriage?
five years of marriage. Oh, okay, that's a hard one. That's okay, okay, okay. Let's give them the secret. Okay. They want to know what's the secret of being married for 25 years. We're almost coming to an end, but let us understand this. Now, what portion I will tell you and what we'll discuss now works for us. doesn't mean it will work for you, but there are some fundamental truths in here that may help you. Not giving up on each other is our first thing. Why? Because I made a choice decision that I want to marry Portia and I love her. So the choice decision is not being up. When we have arguments and disagreements, it does not mean that's the end of the marriage. No. It, that's part of the process. So no matter what, it's about two successful forgivers. Ruth Al Graham said that a successful marriage is about two successful forgivers. Both husband and wife forgiving each other. Fear of God and praying together. Very important. Fear of God and praying together. You must be able to pray with your wife. She must hear what's in your heart and vice versa. You understand? And you find that when you pray together, man, your relationship gets strong. Gets strong. And respecting each other and being open and honest with each other about everything. I must respect Portia. She respects me. You understand? I, it doesn't mean I'm the man and now only respect has to come my way. No, 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 no. I've got to respect too. It works two ways. You understand? She's a human being too. I've got to... And I, listen, I'm talking like a great gun, like I got this made. Let me tell you. Portia will tell you, I make mistakes. I do. But I'm quick to go and say, love, I'm sorry. I do that. She also does the same thing. Why? Because we realize and we understand that we are in this together forever and ever. So if we don't fix it, who's going to fix it? Nobody. We can't live in misery and just exist. God's given us purpose. And our purpose has got to be filled with happiness and love and a kiss now and then. Does that answer your question? Is that a you <laughs> Um, I think that um, we truly believe that God has put us together. And so despite all the storms and the trials and the challenges that we have faced, we know that God's put us together. We can't give up on anything. We're here. We're together. And we just have to work through it. And um, the quicker we believe that couples can realize that storms and problems are actually part of the marriage journey, mm. the quicker you'll come to accepting that and then work together as a couple, a unified couple, through these storms, you know, with God leading you. Um, because that's unity on its own, even if it is a storm. And I think um, strength in that, you know, and even if there's, is, there's challenge uh, w within the couple, if if counseling is needed or guidance is needed, people should never feel um, bad to go for. You know, sometimes you feel, oh, you don't want to do that because people, or, mm, you know, stigma. it's just a stigma yeah. or, yeah, you just, it's not a good thing to do. But it actually is your focus should be on wanting to have a healthy marriage. Yes. And if, if, if you can find help in some way to strengthen your marriage, strengthen the areas, okay where you feel you need some guidance in, why not? Because what's most important? You and Darren staying together forever and ever. And, um, yeah. and also, like, marriage is a, it's a beautiful gift from God, okay? But it really takes consistent hard work. It's not an easy job. It's a hard work thing. And uh, I think... We've been on such a journey where um, I remember the times when we'd have arguments. I think I've lost the page here, but anyway. Oh, is that on the conflict question? <laughs> we'd have, que uh, have arguments and, you know, uh, what's the scripture? Don't let the sun go down. On your road. Yeah, Ephesians. And um, there were nights. In 25 years, I can't say there isn't one over, over one. There's a few nights that we have went to bed 
argued, okay, angry with each other. But we've always um, come very quickly to resolve the issue. So and I think a big thing is that you are in this together, to, together. Yeah. For, for those like four many years. You gotta just yeah, yeah. sort it out. And uh, did we speak about conflict? I think I is that so? I, I'm sorry. I think I oh. jumped into it. <laughs> okay. Okay. Sorry. Because because uh, you know, guys, if you and your wife are having an argument, and it's coming late at night, and it's time to go to bed, and you don't go to bed. Sometimes you want to sit in the lounge, and sometimes the wives, you know, they can be stubborn, they sit in the lounge and sleep, or the husbands can be stubborn and stay in the lounge, and the wives go to bed, or the spouses go to bed. You don't have a good night's sleep. You don't sleep. So why go through all that pain and pressure? Make up. Go and say, I'm sorry, please forgive me. I speak about that often in marriage, the reset button of life. Three simple words. I am sorry. Please forgive me. Those three words save a lot of heartache, a lot of uh, problems, and brings your marriage to a stronger place. It also deals with issues, and this is another subject now, of pride on the inside that we don't know we have. If you can't say sorry, please forgive me, hey, that's issues of pride. I'm just saying it because... I can tell you as a husband, it is your job to say, I'm sorry. Why? Because you will make mistakes. As a wife, it's your job to say, I'm sorry, when you make a mistake. You cannot have pride to say, think, oh, only the husbands have problems. No, wives also. And so it, it is a coming together of both parties, imperfect people, imperfect people, because we are not perfect, but we are coming together in a perfect union who is ordained by God. Always remember that. Any more questions? Any more questions? Are we done? Was that? Okay, great. Now, you want to add something, love, before we... You want to... Okay. With, with respect to your question on um, what is your secret to dealing with conflict, I would just say uh, something similar, but don't sweep it under the carpet. Um, it seems some, sometimes many couples go long periods of time not talking to each other. You know, they forget about it and then they just carry on and they don't actually deal with the, the problem. And that builds and it festers and then it erupts. Okay? Mm. I would say just... Um, don't go silent on each other, you know, for too long. Just resolve the issue by dealing with the actual issue. Otherwise, you'll never move on. You're never growing as a couple. And um, an example I could give you all about us is like sometimes it's been a beautiful day. We've had a great day together. And then all of a, something, all of a sudden, some argument happens over something trivial, you know. And it could just mess the entire atmosphere. And so each of actually needs to be able to discern that the enemy doesn't want harmony in a marriage. Absolutely. And that. especially Say that again. Say the that enemy again. doesn't want harmony in a marriage. He mm. wants division and he yes. wants to break what he has just seen for that entire day. Because yes. I'm sure you all have had arguments as couples too, <laughs> you know, where you've had just the greatest day and then all of a sudden you wonder, where did, how did that happen? You know, that's reality. But to be able to learn it and not allow that atmosphere to stay in your home. Mm. Mm. Just fix that Correct. atmosphere as quick as possible. Correct. Because it's a spiritual attack. A spiritual attack. And I think um, I would just like to leave you here with a scripture. Um, it's from the Passion Translation. And I shared this with the daughters at one time. A person of honor will put an argument to rest. But only the stupid want to pick a fight. So I was talking about marriages then, and it, I think it was in relation to marriages. So we must always think of the scripture when we want to just, you know, pick that fight. We don't want to be called stupid, right? <laughs> and, um, yeah, just marriages should not um, exist. They should not just exist. If we must just work on the areas that we need to Welcome to make it a healthy marriage because it's a beautiful thing. Thank you, love.
We're concluding with this now. Marriage is hard work. Marriage is hard, hard work. And the more you work at it, the more you will see the fruit and the results of that hard work. And so right now we've come to the end of this program. It's been one of the longest Tuesday evening programs we've had. But as you can see, there's so many of you online, which we so appreciate. And thank you for staying online. But don't sign off just yet because as we've said, we have a competition. There is a dinner for two up for grabs tonight. This dinner for two, unfortunately, dear people, it is only for married couples. And so, uh, courtesy of uh, Sini Insurance Broker tonight, there is a dinner for two up for grabs, and Portia is going to give you the question, and you've got to be quick on your dial. The first person to answer this question is going to get the prize. So, sweetie, go for it. Okay, so you ready? Where in the Bible would you find the verse speaking about love being the greatest? Here's a clue for you. you get, you've got to have faith and hope to find it. Right. Quickly, the person who responds online on this program will be the winner. Right? So let's see. The question is, where in the Bible would you find verse speaking about love being the greatest? Yes, yeah, clue. You've got to have faith and hope to find it. Let's see. Who's the winner? Who's the winner? <laughs> Going once. Come, everybody. Right, you've got to be more specific than that. You've got to be more specific than that. Uh, Bronston DeLang, you've got to be more specific than that. More s not the actual, the actual verse. The actual verse. No, you're not there, but you've got to be more specific. More specific. Where it's talking about, remember, where it's talking about faith and hope. Where in the Bible would you find the verse speaking about love being the greatest? What? Jonathan Francis! 1 Corinthians 13.13, 13, that's the one. Oh, and Irene Nidy, you came just after Jonathan. Sybil, also, 1 Corinthians chapter... Okay, John, ah, oh, there's it all coming in now. Hannah Chetty, Corinthians 13. Lorna, 13.1. Oh, you are all getting there. It looks like, it looks like, I don't know, we have to do with the adjudicators. We've got the, who, it was Jonathan the first one. <laughs> Guys, you're all seeing it online. This is live right now. You would see the answer is 1 Corinthians 13 verse 13. So you tell me, who was the winner? Come, let me see. Send the name in. Send me the name. You can see it on your, on your uh, screen. Who was the winner? Hey, Bronston, you were there, but you came in late, my friend. All the way from Peter Maritzburg. Love you, man. Was it Jonathan? Lona, was that Jonathan? Come, guys, just look at your screens. Was it Jonathan? Okay, there's number two saying Jonathan as well. Who else can read that it is Jonathan Francis? That's the winner. Come, one person. No, Sharon, you, it's already done, dear. Sorry. Right, one more person, tell me, right. Jonathan was first. So, the winner, thank you, Vino Moodley, you're also confirming it. The, uh, the winner tonight for a dinner for two, it goes to Jonathan and Felicia Francis. God bless you. We will keep in touch. Tonight was just an awesome evening. There's going to be much more like this. Thank you for just being online. I want Darren and uh, Tamlin to say a final words of uh, goodbye and just give them one little piece of advice to those who are not yet married and are preparing to get proposed, etc. What would you tell them? And same with you that are recently married and then Portia will conclude and I will pray. Um, I have one bit of advice if you are single, um, and my dad told me this, um, he said, it's better to wait long than to marry wrong. Wow, <laughs> I love that. Tamlin says, according to dad, it's better to wait long than to marry wrong. 
Well done. I love that. Well done, Mr. Chidi. Okay. Go, Darren. I read this somewhere, I can't remember where. Uh, we all are looking for the perfect person, but we should try to be the perfect person. Right, right. You're always looking for Mr. or Mrs. Right. Instead of looking for Mr. or Mrs. Right, be the right person and you'll go a longer way. Yes, Mr. Mr. and Mrs. Mudley. Okay, for me, I feel the most important thing is to find your best friend in your life partner and to always put God first in your marriage. Okay, I like that too. Good. To all the guys that are newly married, just say yes. <laughs> <laughs> but it's, yeah, putting God first. And always making sure that you check with your wife if it's okay. <laughs> now listen, he's actually talking about submission and accountability. That is very important. Another subject for another day. Portia, what do you want to say before we end? I just want to say that marriage is really a beautiful thing. There is so much of ups and downs and ups and downs. But overall, God would not design something that is not good and perfect and, and, and beautiful. So... It's a beautiful thing and just, I would say, make sure you find that right par partner. Take your time and use the right person. Wait long, 100%. Otherwise, you marry wrong. Yeah. Good. And as you've said, that person must love God more than you. Then that immediately, that's a huge tick. <laughs> All right, dear friends, let us now bow heads in prayer. And we've had such a beautiful evening today. Father, we just want to say thank you today as we have come and just sat and discussed real life situations about marriage, about relationships. Thank you that we can learn from each other. And this journey that we are on with life and with you leading us, thank you that we have you to fall back on. Father, I want to say thank you today for both these couples, Darren and Tamlin, recently engaged and on the road now to plan a wedding whenever that is. Father, give them the understanding of the times. Let them redeem this time and let them understand purpose that exists in marriage. Thank you, Lord, that you have placed them and brought them to such a strong place as a couple. And then on the right hand side, both Darren and Kaveshni, thank you that they've been recently married. It's just a few months now in lockdown. Thank you, O God, that you have brought them also to a strong place. Thank you also for all that you have done and doing in their lives. We see the hand of God upon their lives. We see the mighty hand move, uh, even in challenges and situations and things that they put their faith in and trust you for. God, we see how you've shown yourself strong. Thank you for all that you are doing in their lives. And tonight, Lord, I pray for every marriage out there. Everyone that is going through a time that they did not expect. I pray today, God, and this is the word I speak, soften the hearts today of every hardened man and woman. Soften the hearts, Holy Spirit, right now. Make every hardened heart soft. Turn, turn every heart of stone into a heart of flesh. And let it be susceptible for the power of the Holy Spirit to come in. Restore marriages. Let men be able to say, I'm sorry, please forgive me. Let wives be able to say, I'm sorry, please forgive me. Remove the spirit of pride and let the spirit of humility come in Jesus' name. Father, we thank you that you've ordained marriage and what you brought together, let no man put asunder. Today we give you the thanks, the worship and all of the praise in Jesus' name. Amen. Dear friends, God bless you. Good night. It was such an honor just being with you. And we will see you on Sunday at the drive-in service here at Springfield Park. The past Sunday was phenomenal in the rain. This Sunday, let's see what's going to happen. But I can guarantee you, God is going to show up. Good night and God bless you. Say good night.